Donald Trump did an interview with Hugh Hewitt, and during this interview, he said something so absurd and ridiculous that even Hugh Hewitt seemed shocked by it. And also, aside from the ridiculousness of it, it did seem to indicate a little bit of fear on Trump's part, and we'll get into that after the clip. So the context is Hugh Hewitt is asking about potential debates between Donald Trump and Joe Biden and says, do you think that Joe Biden will engage in these debates with you? And Trump decides to lead that into an accusation against Joe Biden about, well, you'll see. You have said you'll debate him anywhere, anytime. Do you think he'll agree yeah, any, to any debate? Anywhere, anytime. Do you think you he'll think, agree? I don't think so, but I hope he does. Do I you think, think he, what happened is, you know, that, that white stuff that they happened to find, which happened to be cocaine in the White House? I don't know. I think... I'm going to really quickly pause your viewing of this video to ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just click that subscribe button plus the like button as well and the alert bell so you get notifications. Back to it. I think something's going on there because I watched his State of the Union and he was all jacked up at the beginning. By the end, he was fading fast. There's something going on there. I want to debate. And uh, I think debates with him, at least, should be drug tested. I want to. Uh, Mr. Test President, are you debate. suggesting President Biden's using cocaine? I don't know. <laughs> you, you, are you suggesting this? Yes, obviously. I my goodness, we're breaking news on the Hugh Hewitt show. Uh, here's Trump's response to that question. So the, the question is, are you accusing Biden of being on cocaine at the State of the Union? And Trump goes, I, I don't know, but uh, yeah, <laughs> essentially. I don't know what he's using, but that was not, hey, he was higher than a kite. And, and by the way, it was the worst, it was the worst address I've ever seen, State of the Nation. I'll tell you, State of the Union that's not State of the Union because he doesn't he doesn't represent us properly. That I can tell you. But he's, he's obviously he's being helped some way because most of the time he looks like he's falling asleep. And all of a sudden he walked up there and did a poor job. But he was all jacked up. So I think he's afraid of debating Joe Biden, interestingly enough even with all the rhetoric we hear about Biden, he's going to fail so hard. I think him saying this is him trying to preemptively get ahead of a potential bad debate performance for him and a good debate performance for Joe Biden, because he's saying, listen, you're asking me about debates. So this has nothing to do with State of the Union. But then he goes, but you know, Biden might be on cocaine at a debate. So yeah, I want to debate him, but he might be on cocaine, <laughs> which call me naive. I don't see 80 plus year old Joe Biden snorting coke before he goes out on stage at the State of the Union seems a little bit unlikely. And also they don't understand that, well, first off, Trump doesn't understand that this makes him sound scared, right? Having to accuse Joe Biden of being high as a kite, and that's why maybe he's gonna perform well at the debate, better than expected, is so desperate, so desperate. But also, I don't think right-wing media and Republicans understand that spending their time talking about how Joe Biden was too energetic at the State of the Union address, or too energetic at this thing or that thing, and even alluding to him being on drugs, that is such a good narrative, because no one's gonna believe the drugs part of it, at least in the rational world, uh, in terms of cocaine. Maybe he's on the drug of caffeine. I'm not sure. But uh, people will take away, oh, maybe maybe we blow out of proportion a little bit the sleepiness of Joe Biden, right? Because, of course, there's so many situations where Biden is low energy. And sometimes I'm thinking to myself, come on now, let's show a little bit of that Scranton Joe, that dark Brandon energy. But the State of the Union and other speeches we've seen show when it's necessary he can bring the energy and i will say to the criticism of him being quote unquote sleepy i'd rather have a sleepy president who can govern really effectively than a very loud and obnoxious president <clears throat> trump who can't govern effectively and so i think we could spend our time a little bit more productively discussing the policies that impact millions of people's lives and not just the things that immediately meet the eyes and ears uh, but regardless you have Fox News running with a story about how, as Sean Hannity did, Joe Biden's too jacked up now. The State of the Union was too jacked up. Ah, it's so annoying. He was shouting at us. And we saw the polls show people actually had a really positive perception of Biden's State of the Union address. Then that's good with me. That's a better 
version of their daily propaganda than we normally get. And I think that actually advantages Joe Biden. But Trump bringing this up within the context of the conversation about a potential debate definitely shows he's a little scared. He's a little scared about Biden coming out strong, according to him, after snorting cocaine or something. My goodness, can you imagine? Next moment from this interview, uh, Trump gets asked about the topic of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and who Kennedy will take more votes from. Let me talk to you about the polls. Oh, yeah. You're ahead in almost every poll and almost every state and often by a lot. You get better when RFK is in, but RFK said Biden, Robert Kennedy Jr., said Biden is worse for democracy than you. And polls continue to show that, you know, effectively some polls show you're tied. Do you think RFK is going to help you being on the ballot or is he going to help Biden being on the ballot? I think he actually hurts Biden. He's very liberal. And I think he probably hurts Biden. Biden is, you know, I don't know if he's liberal, but he's certainly playing a game better than anybody's ever played it from the standpoint of that. He's certainly playing the game better than anyone's ever played it from the standpoint of that. Wow. <laughs> but Biden's the one who can't speak effectively. Sheesh. That's brutal. Uh, but yeah, I actually agree with Trump. I think the, unfortunately, just the name Kennedy and there being another option because some people really want a different option will put in jeopardy Biden's candidacy. Just the chance of some people in the important states voting third party for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Where if a lot of these voters would look into RFK Jr. a little bit more, they would stop supporting him probably. But he could siphon away crucial votes. And I will say, if indeed he does that and the result is Donald Trump getting elected, he will forever go down in history as a shameful, shameful human being and figure in our political process. And so here, Trump admitting essentially, and hopefully admitting, he wants this to be the case, that Kennedy is going to hurt Biden more than him. And we've seen polls that indicate different things, sometimes more from Trump, sometimes more from Biden lately, more from Biden. But just that unknown variable, we're really not going to know until Election Day. And so the best thing Kennedy could do to prevent a disastrous scenario where Trump gets elected because he siphons away enough votes from Biden in crucial swing states is to drop out and support Biden if he cared about our democracy. But he's accusing Biden of being a greater threat to democracy than Trump shows you how rational Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is. Okay, while we're on the subject of Trump, I've been wanting to talk about this guy for a while. So let's stick it into this story. Uh, Trump endorsed a MAGA congressional candidate in South Carolina named Mark Burns. And just to read you from this clip caption that the Republican Voters Against Trump account sent out, uh, this is Mark Burns. I'm about to show you a compilation of some things he said. He's running for Congress in South Carolina. If he's elected, he wants to hold people like Lindsey Graham accountable for treason and have them executed. He also believes that gay marriage should be illegal. Yesterday, Donald Trump endorsed Mark Burns. And just take a look at the quality of candidate that Trump is endorsing. When I'm elected, I don't want to just vote. I want to start holding people accountable for treason. Lindsey Graham should be held accountable for treason. We need to hold people for treason, start having some public hearings, and start executing people who are found guilty for their treasonous acts against the Constitution of the United States of America, just like they did back in 1776. Any policy that is contrary to the word of God, we need to remove it from uh, from 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 the from the from our uh, 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 from mainstream America and make it illegal. I say the Bible says it's illegal for a man to be with a man. I say it's illegal for a woman to be with a woman. So that's who Trump is choosing to give his endorsement to. Judge Trump, based on who he is, the danger he poses to democracy. We've talked about also judge him based on who he surrounds himself with and some of his advisors, how deranged they are and judge him based on who he endorses too. Because the fact that he would give his stamp of approval to that dangerous candidate is frightening. It really is. I mean, talking about making relationships between same sex couples illegal and executing politicians and all these different deranged things, 
uh, that is just yet another example of how extreme the MAGA part of the GOP has become. And that's who Trump says he should be in a position of power. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel.